Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In today's episode, I like to teach you what C++17 brings you for Veridic templates or better how to write recursion-free Veridic templates with C++17. So here I have the motivating example, which as you can see at the top is C++14 code. What I have here is a function template add, which is also a Veridic template. Let's start looking at lines 7 to 11 here for the start. I have the template head. My template takes a type name t and a type name dot 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 ts. So it's obviously a Veridic template. Function itself is called add. It's const expert and returns auto. It takes one const tref called val and the ts is also by const ref. We can see this here is the parameter pack called vals. And what I'm doing there is, as the function implies, I'm adding val plus a recursive call to add filled with the unpacked parameter pack valves. So this is the usual trick you're seeing for Veridic templates. We have a function template that takes one argument that's fixed and a parameter pack that enables us to split up one element from the parameter pack because we cannot index into the parameter pack. And that's also the reason why I have this other function template here also called add taking only a type t so a single parameter this is my terminating case because my parameter pack here decays from any number to zero and i either need a add function that takes no parameter or one that takes one to whatever you want to stop the recursion here and my experience it's the easiest one to say you provide a function that takes one parameter because you can echo the type of this parameter then as the result of this function. In my case, add here, the highlighted part. If you write a function add that takes no parameter, then figuring out the correct return type is troublesome. So this here is the implementation. I'm verifying that it works down here with the static assert, calling it with different values. If I now transform this, then you can see what we saw a lot in C++ in previous episodes. I have the primary template here. We see an instantiation here for my add function template taking only a single parameter. So it's instantiated for int because I'm only using ints here. And then we can see the primary template for our Veridic function template here. And now we can see it gets instantiated for three times int. So one in here is well, and the other two are my parameter pack, wells one and wells two. Here we can see this calculates val plus add of wells one and well two. And then we have another instantiation of my variable function template add here with two parameters, int for well and int for well one. So this is where the recursion here ends. Add gets called with only a single parameter and does not call itself again. You can do this with more parameters, but I think it's enough to visualize the case. Now, one question I often receive presenting code like this is that people ask me, is the compiler able to get rid of all this recursion? And the answer always is, it depends. So for some things it can do it, but there is a threshold how deep compilers look into avoiding recursions. And if the values are only provided at runtime and there are more, well, let's say to the compiler um, disturbing calculations, then the compiler might not optimize away the recursion or at least not entirely. And well, we might not want to have a recursion at this point because it means calling functions going deep down in a call stack maybe. So a way to ensure that there is no recursion would be nice. And this is what C++17 enables us in, I would say, a real easy way. 
So this is the same implementation you can see from the lines of codes, it's shorter, because I no longer need the terminating function template. So all I need is the function template you can see from lines one to five. It looks like the previous Braddock template. And now the magic happens here. So this here is the fold expression and it comes in different flavors. You can have a unary or binary fold and we also distinguish between a left and right fold. The left or right notation means at which position the dots occur based on the pack. Okay, if they occur left or right from the parameter pack. And what you're looking at here by that notation is a binary left fold because we have a starting value, we have then our pack and then the pack name. So the pack is left from the pack name, making it a left fold. Would it be the other way around? It would be a right fold, okay? And that's important for how the parentheses are packed around values. We will see that in a moment. What that thing now does is, first of all, the parentheses around this are crucial. So you must write them, that makes it a fold expression. And then we have the ability to specify an operation. In case of a binary fold, the two operations we can list here must be of the same uh, type. So it must be the same operation. Okay, you cannot say minus and plus in the same fold expression. It must be plus or minus for both of them. And that now tells the compiler to have val plus all the elements in the parameter pack put together by plus. So let me transform that I think then it gets easy. So this here is as previously the primary template and this here is now the instantiation for my add function with three values, two, three, and four. And now we can see it's val plus val one. So the first parameter from a parameter pack plus val two. Here we can see this is where the compiler distinguishes between a left and a right fold. It's also how things are grouped. Okay, so we have here a left fold. That means the parentheses are added from the left to the right. So let's do a simple thing here. We insert another number and then I have to adjust the static assert. And now we can see, looking at the braces, the compiler first adds val to val1 and then in the next pair of parentheses the compiler adds the result of that to val2 and then finally um, this result gets added to val3. Would I now change that, let's say making it a right fold? Now the three dots are right of the fold name. If I transform this, then we can see now it starts from the inner to the out. So well three plus well first, then plus well two, then plus well one. So this is how you can have different mathematical operations and group them according to the rules required or according to the formula you need. The beauty about this thing is now it's not recursive. It never is. Okay, so you simply say the operation and this one is applied to the values in the parameter pack. And that's dropping the need for the terminating all function template. And it also removes the question for is the compiler able to remove the recursion because this is simply a lot of values added, multiplied, divided or whatever your operation you have together. If you have C++17 available and you're writing very templates, default expressions a try, I would say they are worth it because it, it's less code to write from our side and there are good chances that this code is, well, less by default without relying too much on optimizations. So I hope you learned something from today, even if it's C++17 and we are now more in the C++23 area, but this I think it's a real 
beneficial feature from C17. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.